guys. Mike, your host of Crushing Your Fear. How are you today? What's bothering you? What's, what's, what do you fear today? Know that it's probably 90%. It's garbage, right? It's all thoughts. Um, and that's what we try to promote in this podcast. And we get people on, really great people, who talk about their fears. Um, and uh, today we did a reciprocal kind of podcast with... Uh, no Bull Business and Bruce podcast. And these are uh, Jason Grabier, um, Grabiel and Steve Taylor. Uh, they're, they're two great guys, um, you know, Apex Executives, which I just joined. They're also an RT, which is a fantastic uh, group. Apex Executives is Ryan Stuman. Check Ryan out. He's an awesome guy. And also RT is Ed Milet and Andy Frisella, fantastic people. Um, learning a lot from these guys, and we just connected, and we said, "Hey, let's do a podcast." So they they were they had me on, and I said, "Well, I'm going to ask you a couple questions as well." And we had a great conversation. So um, we're going to get to it. But first, hey, have you gone on iTunes? Give us a rating and review. I love I love if you give me five stars. That'd be fantastic. And uh, subscribe. Tell a friend. Tell ten friends about the podcast that'd be fantastic so uh without further ado here are the no bull business and bruise dudes here we go but um not to give your book away but everybody we talked about it before we started recording this you know everybody's got fears right Every, it doesn't matter who you are so what do you have any tips and tricks to overcome those fears i mean i used to to be honest with you, i used to have a, a fear of talking to people i don't have that fear anymore i learned that I could get past that, right? No bullshit, Jason. I know you don't believe it. Um, but can we talk about that? Do you have any tips or tricks, like, you know, something that somebody can do to overcome those types of things? A lot of people that I speak to um, say, instead of run, running away from your fear, run towards it, right? Embrace yep. it and rechannel it. There's a lot of energy around us, you know, which I'm learning more and more each day. But there's a huge amount of en energy around us, and, and we, we can either be on a higher level like and just uh, think about abundance, or we could be at this lower level and just be scared um, and just be afraid of this fear right? That, that comes towards you, whereas you should really run towards it. If there's a wall there, run towards the wall and break through it, and that gives you just tremendous confidence. Um, there's also a lot of fear that's created in your mind that, you know, people don't, um, you know, handle well, you know what I mean? And there's two types of fear. There's either the real fear where, you know, like cavemen, right? Saber-toothed tiger. Like if I don't run, this, this dude is going to eat me. Uh, right. Whereas, you know, imagining what somebody's going to, you know, react to one of the things that you're going to tell them and just being afraid of that and not even really telling them what you feel that's a huge fear that people carry with them. Um, there's also fears of, you know, one sentence of, uh, you know, a child. You could say one thing to a child one time, and that could change the course of their life pretty much. So you, just being careful on what you, especially children, they're very, um, uh, very impressionable. Um, but people carry a lot of uh, fear around with them. Maybe an event happened in the past. Uh, maybe they're worried about uh, what people think of them um and gary v uh, says it the best it's it's kind of we're um we spend our lives you know uh buying stuff we really don't need to impress people we really don't like <laughs> so that's my favorite yeah you know and and it's true and you just got to tell you just can't care about what other people think of you you have to kind of do what you need to do what you think is right and move forward. So I try to get people on that talk about their fears, how they've overcome them. And, and a lot of them just kind of said, you know, enough. They just stood up and kind of just said, look, this is where I'm going. This is what, this, this is what's attracting me. I'm going this way, you know, and then there's a lot of people around you as well. We're trying to keep you down. Right. And, and it's a lot, a lot of it's on them. It's like, they don't want to see you move forward because you're going to leave them behind. 100%. And then so they have you, their own their own insecurities. Sure. So would you agree that, you know, in, in the experience you have of talking to people when they do finally face their fear, you know, they run into that, that brick wall, 
they break through that brick wall that most of the time people generally just feel this sense of relief, the sense of accomplishment that it actually, this fear most of the time was being manifested in themselves, that it was this false fear, this false creation that once they actually just broke through it, it really wasn't that big of a deal in the first place. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you can create stuff in your mind. They call it the monkey mind, right? It's just like these things, these, these monkeys just trying to, you know, blow something up, right? That's just small and you have a thought. Mind is very powerful, right? If you can't contain it, can't control it, it could just go out of control and then you could start seeing a different reality, right? Of what, what is really real. Um, so, but the the best way is an action, right? If there's a fear, the best way to move through it is just to act, do something. Don't sit there and think about it. You know, and, and a lot of people, especially the, the, the um, you know, the executives and the people who have done a lot of things with their life, just, just got to do something, you know, just don't sit there and analyze it. Yeah, we talk about that a lot. I mean, imperfect action beats no action every day. Yep. Yeah, just gotta right. do it like podcasts. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm like, whatever. I did the I did <laughs> the craft beer pot. Yeah, we don't know what the hell we're doing. We're on, and we're putting it out. And Apple takes it, and I'm like, all right, that's cool. So uh, we're on iTunes. But I um, I did the beer podcast because I, I just I had the brewery. I developed the brewery, and and I was listening to this beer podcast. They were talking about like their dogs. They were talking about what they did last weekend. I'm like, how is this helping me with beer? Like right. I, I'm I'm trying to learn more about beer so i just said screw it i'm gonna do my own so i did my own i got i got the equipment which i still use now <laughs> but it works right. and uh i just started my own podcast and i grew it like I, we were talking about i i, I you know i've had like twenty five thousand downloads to date they love it awesome. you know and i'm still and i haven't put an episode out in a while i have to i have to revisit it because i we were talking about it it's just it got so depressing with the pandemic a lot of breweries were closing a lot of the uh, tap rooms were empty because of the, the local city ordinances and they had curbside pickup and, you know, it was just depressing. So I, I just stopped for a while, but I got to get back into it because a lot of these breweries are opening up and it's um, it's kind of a big opportunity for people. A lot of, a lot of breweries close, but there's, there could be people that come in and kind of take them over and, and, you know, create a new, a new, uh, you know, breakthrough, a new drive for craft beer, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't noticed, I mean, we, we actually think people like to, you know, like to drink beer and talk about beer. So, <laughs> I, think 100%, I like yeah. your combination. What is it? Business and uh, brews? A noble business and brews. Yeah. yeah. So you live in Rochester, is that correct? I, Rochester, New York? I live in Westchester, New York. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's like about five, 30 minutes north of Manhattan. Okay. So with, with COVID and everything going on, I'm just, I just, I'm curious, what does it look like over there now? You guys are starting to open up. I mean, we're opening up very slowly in Oregon. I'm just curious to what, it, how that's working for you guys right now. Oh boy. I don't want to talk about politics. Like the governor of Oregon, like what, <laughs> who voted for this lady, right? What, like uh, we, we ask ourselves the same question yeah. almost I, every day. I, I don't know. And it, and who voted for my governor here in New York, right? <laughs> he's, he's on the hot he's seat. He's going to get kicked out though, isn't he? Does he going to get booted? He doesn't want He's to been leave. Asses and all kinds of stuff. Even the Democrats <laughs> are like, "You got to leave, dude!" Like Biden's even coming out, like, "You got to leave." And he's like, "Nope, they voted me in. I'm staying." And you know, I don't know what's going to happen with him, but you know, here. even when New York and California and Washington are questioning our own governor in Oregon, yeah. you're like, <laughs> "We're in bad man, shit, we're Mike, <laughs> <laughs> There's a problem, yeah. But you know, yeah, yeah a lot of a lot of prominent Democrats are, are questioning a lot of these governors, and um, especially in California, I think they've gotten enough votes to get uh, Newsom out. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's happening with that. I, I, you know, they said that they have. I don't know what's happening, but uh, Cuomo, yeah, but they've really destroyed. You know, I got to be honest, and especially in New York City, they've destroyed a lot of businesses. Oh, shut down. I went. I was around uh, Times Square like during Christmas time. I brought my kids into the city. It was like a dentist appointment. I'm like, let's stay over. We'll get a hotel room because there was like, there's so many. And it was cheap. And we were just walking in Times Square around Christmas time. Usually it's packed with people. Like you can't get through, like thousands of people. Like we just strolled all the way through. There was maybe about a, a, a hundred people. Like it was a ghost town. In, in New York City. New York City, yeah. in Manhattan, wow. in Times Square. And you know, people see pictures of these things. They've destroyed a lot of restaurants. Um, a lot of businesses went out. 
the, the, the amount of fear that's been perpetrated by the, uh, the, go- the local governments and the media has just been terrible, you know, and, and, and they're still with the vaccine. You know, my sister texted me like she's she's I don't know. She's <laughs> I, lo- I love her, but she's like Whoosh. Um, she's like, when are you going to get your vaccine shot? I'm like, I'm not going to get it. I'm like, I don't need it. I'm healthy. Yep. I, I think it's, it's terrible that they, um, they only developed it. I know they needed to have it, but they only had it for nine months. Like vaccines, it takes years, right? Of testing yep. before they inject it. People are just getting them injected. Yeah. Yep. Nine years on average, I think for your, your typical vaccine to no, finally hit the market. I don't want to pump that stuff into me. I'm sorry. I don't know. And people are dying from it. Maybe not a lot, but there are people, there are deaths. I think there's like 1900 deaths or something so far, which, you know, I don't know. Anyway, well, I mean, we talk about fear, right? I mean, this entire thing has been driven by fear in a lot of ways. And um, you talk about how par- powerful that emotion is. I mean, I think COVID has proven that nationwide, even worldwide, how powerful fear is. And you can literally control an entire nation of people with fear. You can control a planet. You can control and, a planet. You know what? Yeah. And, Global and shutdown, actually. right? Who would have right. thought, Right. If I was like a year and a half ago, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a global shutdown. They're like you'd be like, all right, but you, how many beers did you have, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like, no, tell you, we're gonna have a. I promise you, we're gonna have a global shutdown. Like people don't they don't get it, and um, there's a lot of people out there that just still I, I don't understand. I, I mean, I see very clearly through the whole thing, um, and there's a lot of people who say no, that's not happening. I'm like, yes, it is. It's just look yeah. at the facts, look at the numbers. It's just kind of a and, – and Andy Frasilla, we're in Arte as well. Yep. Um, he says it's a power grab, and it is. It's just a power grab, and there's yeah. a lot of forces. Frankly, there's you, individuals out there that are, are just not, not good people that are just doing this stuff. I agree completely. I think that if you can't look at some of the data and look at – you know, they always claim science and the, and the numbers. If you're not looking at some of the di- data and numbers now and not seeing that that's happening, frankly, you're just ignorant. Hundred percent. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Yes, but that's the problem. I yeah, that the media. Ah, gosh, guys, we're gonna have to get off this because we're gonna talk about <laughs> politics forever. But the media has just they they. That was one of our rules too, right? I know, no, no but they. they I know. know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help know? it. I'm like, I just can't. I I see this this travesty happening. Okay, and I don't know. It, it's just horrible. Okay, and it's affected a lot of people. It it's affected. It's just cost a lot of dollars. It affected my kids. All right, they're scared. They didn't want to get on a plane with me. I wanted to take them away to Florida. Let's go. No, Dad, we're going to get COVID. I'm like, they have HEPA filters. You can eat off the seats because they fog the plane and they they wipe everything down. Finally, I'm taking them to Orlando uh, next week. They've agreed. You know, after like after like <laughs> six months, I'm like let's go. I've been on twenty flights in the past year. Right. Twenty. I'm not shitting you. Like serious. Right. Yep. And I'm okay. And, you know, the planes are, are safer than anything. Um, just the cost of, of this whole thing, uh, the businesses that have been destroyed, and the fear that it's been instilled in a whole bunch of people. And we can go really deeper, like what Cuomo did with the nursing homes and stuff like that, but I don't want to get into that. That's probably another part. We should have a part two. Let's do another one. <laughs> totally, yeah. But I got to tell you, you're in the right market, Michael, for, the, for your Crushing Fear podcast. Son oh. of a bitch, dude. You to help people get rid of that shit is amazing. And that's, I mean, my hat's off to you, bud. My hat is off to you because that's a big deal. I, I think it's just it's just the thing that I, I, I was called to do. And I really want to focus in on it and really talk to people. And, get, and when people get together, just do, you know, kind of, yeah, I have my book that's going to come out. Um, I want to do some speaking. I just want to talk to you. I want to help people. I'm like, I always offer people. If you want to email me, Michael at crushingyourfear dot com, let's talk. You know, I don't, I don't mind talking to anybody that I've, well, I, I can help them. I stalked you a little bit before this podcast. Oh, um, I, <laughs> I watched several of your videos, and uh, the way the, the way you come across. I mean, so I went on your website, obviously, and I watched all of your videos. Um, the way you come across, you're sitting in the car, you're pretty laid back, but you're just right to the point and straight. And I just, I was telling Jason earlier, I was like, man, I like the way the guy talks. I mean. He kind of draws me in. I, I certainly didn't pause anything. I listened to him till the end. So 
you're quite a speaker as you sit right now. So ah, yeah, I appreciate I can't that. Imagine how you're gonna do when you get when you start doing this more often. So. It's my 180 degree. I'm a CPA, right? So I figure like, right. all right, the, <laughs> my contribution to humanity was like filling out a spreadsheet, putting it in a folder. All right, pay me. That was it. Right. But now it's just like, all right, what can I do? Uh, and if I could do something and help one person, I mean, I think it's all worth it for me, especially. Totally, dude. I also do the, uh, you know, I'm with Ed Milets. Um, he started a new company uh, with uh, selling insurance and annuities for people, but that's the same thing. I mean, if you can help one family, God forbid something happens to one of the parents and you can set their kids up for, you know, an education, sure. keep the ass, keep the house, right? There's so, just so people can we out talk there. about that? Yeah. Can we talk about that for a second? So okay. I don't want to butcher the name. Is it Aurelius? Is that the name of your company? Yeah, Aurelius Resources. Yeah, yeah. Like okay, Marcus so let's, Aurelius. let's talk about that because I did look at your whole life policies. I look at that. I clicked on the deal when you're like, what was it? Don't want your job anymore or whatever. So can we talk a little bit about that, what you offer? Because I think what you offer is something that people can certainly use um, from both from all the aspects of your business. Uh, can we talk about that just a little bit too? Sure. Um, yeah, I joined. How would you, you name it? What, yeah, tell me all about it. I, I joined last year. Well, I'm Italian, right? So um, Aurelius, Marcus Aurelius was an emperor. Yep. And it's just pretty cool. Like I said, just call them Aurelius Resources. I Googled I Googled the uh, the dot com and it was available. <laughs> so I call them Aurelius Resources. But it's a way of, of you know, like um, kind of stoic, right? Mm-hmm. You know, just laying it out there. But uh, people have been laid off from jobs. They might have old 401ks. What do you do with them? You know, I got we got great solutions for you. You can do an annuity, this IULs to protect your family and save for your kids. Um, But also there's opportunities where you can join us and change the course of your life. I mean, Ed talks about it all the time. He talks to us like privately, like his team. And he's like, people don't know this, but this is what they need. They just don't understand it yet. Because it's it's a way where you can you know um, you know start a side hustle right with really there's no um, investment in it all you got to get is your your life insurance license pretty much which is a couple hundred bucks you don't have to spend thousands of dollars the blueprint is laid out all for you there's a blue there's a you know business format system which is laid out and it's just up to you how how far and fast you want to go and a lot of people have jumped in. And, you know, created teams and just changed the course of their uh, life and their family's legacy and created something for their families, you know, when uh, do you really want to work for get, somebody else? Yeah. I think people get surprised when we tell them, you know, the barrier to entrance into the insurance world is is actually pretty low. It really doesn't take yeah. much. I mean, Steve and I are here. So yeah. it clearly yeah. that bar has got to be pretty low. But. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you guys uh, do, you, do you do insurance as well or? We yeah. Do. yeah, we we don't we don't do that. We do we're we're property and casualty. We do a lot of crop insurance and PRF that type of stuff. You know, and personal lines. We do we do that. That's kind of the majority of our business. Definitely heavy on the PNC side and, right. and yes. the focus in agriculture. Well, this is where we see. This is the beauty of the apex as well. We can partner up. Like I got a lot of people that need the PNC. You guys got yep. a lot of people that need the life. There you go. We talk, and we just refer people back and forth. I'm starting to do this Beautiful. with a lot of people and. I'd love to work with you guys, but there you go. See, we got a podcast. Boom. But now yeah, you have yeah, a, you yeah, you have a, it's a great way to start a business and, um, you know, create extra income for your family. This is great for like single moms, uh, or great for just like you're, you're going to this job and you're just dreading it, like getting up and same routine every day. It's like, you know, why do you want to do that and, and kill yourself? You know? And then that's your well, life. That's your legacy. Come on. Yeah. You know, so well, we, Michael, who, yeah, I love that. Who better to work with too than guys like you and Ed Milet? Hello. If yeah. you guys don't know Ed Milet, you've been living under a goddamn rock. <laughs> Ed Milet. I mean, I don't. I honestly, I mean, we're an Arte. You know that. You, know, you you guys listening know that. But I mean, there's not a better guy out there. I mean, philanthropist no. and just a, all in all, good man. And uh, he's a good man. Yeah. And great. then yeah. and I I joined because I someone in Arte did a post. He said, Yeah, I'm in a new business with Ed Milet. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? What business are you in with Ed Milet? And he's like, Well, he's starting his own uh, you know, brokerage again. You know, he's stepping down as chairman and starting his broker. I'm like, Really? I'm like, I can do that. So let's go. So I I did my, you know, exam. I took the exam, I passed and I got my license and 
and here we are. But I, I, um, you know, Ed Milet and Andy Frisilla formed Arte, um, and actually, you know, they're they're having that meetup in in May. You going? Yes, Good I made I made the decision this morning That's after after I heard the podcast. Ed yeah. and Andy were on the podcast, and they just laid it out right. Yeah, they're like, right "Are you serious or what?" You know, yep. like people who say, yeah, it's a lot of money. They're really not serious about this stuff and they just want to stay the same. Well, and, and people, if people can't afford it, that's fine. You know, but for right, right. now I'm, I'm fortunate where I'm, I'm, I'm getting some, you know, I'm doing some work as a CPA and getting some really good money coming in. So I'm like, you know what, <laughs> just do it, you know? So good for you. And, and like, you know, the networking there, we like one of our buddies, Patrick Bellatos, he'll be there. Yeah. Um, we have not signed up yet. We've been talking about it. One of us will probably do it if there's still tickets left. But the networking and the people that, you, that you'll meet with there, is, it's a, I mean. I had Patrick on my podcast. Yeah. Um, I yep, had Patrick. Right I've had um, Thomas on. I had um, yep. uh, Jennifer on. Yeah. Great people. Um, oh, but well, there's a lot of power. <clears throat> you know, people talk about the cost of some of these events and or some of these groups and networking. But I mean, it's just therein lies the thinking of you being afraid of spending or your fear of spending this money and not getting a return out of it and, and just take the action because I have, Oh, I'm, I'm behind. Yes, okay. Right. I'm behind. I'll crack my second beer in a second. Cheers. When I get done, when I get done with this point is that I have easily 10 X any investment into groups like that, that I have ever made. I mean, wow. hands down. And so just the networking with other people like this conversation here, like, Hey, there's an opportunity to make some more money with, you know, transferring some business back and forth. Boom. Okay, great. There's maybe somebody else that does investments or maybe a CPA that can save us some money. Well, you know, there's so much value in a room like that, that just, if you're on the fence about spending money to go to something like that, like I'm actually forcing some of our team members to kind of go to a event here next month, the apex event. And um, we're taking some of our team down there just, just to get these guys and say, Hey, you know, you got to get in a room with these people, network with these people. Like you're going to learn stuff. You're going to make money from this. Just make, just take the first step. You have to, now you have to be careful of what you spend money on. There's a lot of coaches, right? Like I like to surround myself with people who've actually done stuff and, you know, Ed's approaching like a billion dollars net worth with a B, right? And I think Andy's the same thing. They actually have entities. They've created things. Ed has like 20 companies or something like that. And Andy's the same way. He has first form, but yeah. So these guys have actually done stuff and I've listened to them and they've helped me through a lot of hard times. They don't know this. <laughs> But I'll meet them. I'm going to meet them. It's awesome. Yeah. I'm going to Andy's yeah. house. Holy shit. Right on, man. <laughs> that's like crazy. I like I didn't realize that we were going to do that, but I'm going to his house. But that's fantastic stuff. And 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 it's just being around people like that. It's like I probably I would not have been able to afford this a year ago, right? I just yeah. wouldn't. I was not in a position. I was out of work pandemic. If they would have right. done this a year ago, I'd be like, you know, they did this now. My first reaction was like, holy crap like that that much money like to go there i'm like gee and then you know i thought about it and which is bad when you think about things right you got to act and i keep telling myself yeah the way through fear is acting (laughs) so you know what i'm like i'm telling myself i'm like being the victim right the victim i can't afford it oh no oh and then i hear (laughs) these guys this morning on the podcast on, on andy's um you know, the AF podcast. And I'm like, as soon as I got home, I ran onto the computer and I, I just freaking signed up. I'm like, I'm going to do this. Awesome. You Good know, you, man. take an action. Yep. Take yep. action and do it. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I would say, you know, don't, you know, piece of advice is that there's a lot of like Instagram influencers quote, oh, you know, quote unquote. Yes. Take, take a picture with some dude's Lambo and, and say they're a business coach and they've never done shit in their entire life. So, right. you know, take advice from somebody that's done something. I mean, Steve and I feel like we've done something in our lives that mm. we feel comfortable being on a podcast and giving you advice because, Hey, we've been in business for 17 or 20 years. We've actually done some shit. So 
make sure that the guy that you're taking advice from has actually done something or grown something or built something, yeah. sold something. I mean, anything. 100%. Just no, make sure they're somewhat legit. It doesn't take a whole lot of research to figure out that. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've done a couple of businesses. I'm a CPA. I, I, I've had two, you know, two ex-wives. <laughs> I've had a family and I provided for them and I, you know, I did, I did stuff and I'm just trying to transitioning, but the fear aspect, uh, the second marriage, uh, you know, we had the brewery, had the brewery was great. Um, in the beginning we had distributors who were distributing all over New Hampshire. Uh, and then just, it went from 20 breweries in the state to a hundred. So it quintupled over five years. And then the packaging changed from bottles to cans and like my, my margin was eroded and just struggling to stay afloat. Um, you know, the ex-wife took the kids and just left. You know, she left and went back to New York. So I'm I'm stuck in New Hampshire. The house is gone, the family. And I ended up in a strip mall on an air mattress, right? That's where I was. And then I had this tremendous fear, you know, coming down on me. I had a bank that wanted to get paid I had a landlord that was going to evict me. I'm like sleeping in a strip mall. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you know, and, and thank God there was a sale that transacted and I kind of just got out of that. But, um, and then the, you know, the ex-wife was like, where's my child support and stuff like that. So I had the vices and then I was getting this eczema, right? Stress induced eczema just blew up. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Right. Cause I'm pretty healthy. I have a good immune system. I went to, dermatologist like three times and she's like it's stress induced eczema i'm like this is crazy like my fear is just so bad that it's just my my whole body is just falling apart and and i had to make a choice and i had to either you know either go in a corner and put a mask on or whatever or stand up and say i'm gonna get through this you know and and with ed and andy's help i got through it you know, I joined Arate, which which Arate was created, and and if your listeners out there, if they created it because there are a lot of these BS, you know, coaches that want all your money and they don't teach you anything really, or they haven't yep. built anything, and that's what attracted me to them. Actually, I was I like both of them separately, and then when they said they were coming together to do this, I'm like, holy shit, like I gotta get I gotta get in on this, so I I joined. And See, I um, found them. In. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that, that's kind of what it is. So Arte has been fantastic. And then uh, Ryan Stuman, I, I, I listened to his podcast, um, uh, Rewire, and every morning he's like punching me in the face with his, <laughs> his podcast. <laughs> so I'm like, I like this guy. So I, I, I dabbled into Apex and I got I got into the um, a goal rush thing and I started making funnels and then I went to Dallas. And then the second time I went to Dallas, I'm like, I got to do this. So I joined executives. So, so. let's... If you don't mind, I want to talk about your, your, your leads funnel, your sales funnel, because I think that's something that a lot of people can use. And obviously you do it and we yeah. certainly want to promote your business. Can you talk a little bit about that? I read, I read about it obviously, but I kind of want to hear it from you. Funnels are great. Um, it kind of just focuses people. People don't have a big attention span. They want something. So they go on their phones. I just posted a meme today about, um, I just, I was doing a walk and I saw a bunch of, uh, old dictionaries, like an encyclopedia. I saw that. Like people I were throwing that. it out. Yep. And that's what was my go-to thing. Like when I was a kid, like you go to a encyclopedia or go to a library and then look up the answer. Now it's just, they take your phone yep. and you can find whatever you want, you know? And, people's attention span they don't want to look through a, a book they want to know what the answer is and funnels kind of channel them you capture their attention um uh and and then you get their information you get their uh, email you get their name you get their number and then that you can put into a crm and then just follow up with them and yeah. then offer them something in your funnel offer them a free free tips um, sure. I did something with Jessica too. We're doing, we did a, uh, like free tips. And also, um, I did a video of myself about memes using memes on Facebook and how popular it is and how it could yep. get people, you know, involved in you. But, uh, funnels are great. Yeah. King of that. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Drewby Wilson's the king of that. Oh yeah. We yeah. Drewby on the call, uh, a couple weeks ago. I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. I had him he, too. He, I had him awesome. on a podcast too. He's a good yeah. guy. Um, have you, have you read his book, Michael? I have the book. I bought it. I got to read it. I have like friggin' 10 books I got to go through. I, I did the 75 hard and I'm, I'm trying to continue with that 10 pages a day. If you do 10 pages yep. a day, you can read a book in 20 days. And 
um, he's on, he's on my stack. <laughs> so I gotta... well, I'll tell you what, and I, I, I'm going to give, I'm going to give Drewby some props because I read it. Um, I read it and I didn't put it down. I read the entire thing and it was, it was quick and it was a good read. Wow. So you'll have no issue whatsoever reading 10 pages of his book because it's a great story and how things have worked out for him and how hard he's worked. You'll love it, dude. So a uh, shout sounds... out to Crush of the Day for sure. So, yeah, I mean, Drewby's been great. You know, he's got a very, very um, good guy. I'd do anything for you. And he's gotten me into Apex. And, <clears throat> you know, I appreciate him. And I appreciate everybody there. I think it's a fantastic group. Um, you know, uh, but let's talk about you guys. So, <laughs> so you've been through a lot, I guess, in your life. You have the, the two ex-wives. And, and, and yeah. let's touch upon the fear that you've experienced in your life oh. and – kind of how you overcame it and you can pick cherry pick. I don't know. You don't have to go through the whole story. Oh, sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a, um, <laughs> it's a bit of a long story. Um, but yeah, I mean, coming up, so I've always been a sales guy. I, that's always what I've gravitated to and that's what I'm good at. Um, but yeah, you know, the, my first, my first divorce was, uh, was, it was rough, obviously. Um, I was, I was actually quite suicidal for quite a while and it wow. took me a while to get over that. Um, I got some help for that true. And I did, and I needed that. Wow. Um, but yeah, I mean, in, in the whole deal, like you talk about the fear, the fear was that I failed. I'm like, I'm a loser. Right. Yeah. I truly am. I mean, I've lost, I've lost my marriage. Right. Mm. I've so I, at that time I had four different companies that I was worked that I, that I owned. I, so I liquidated, sold everything and I just started over. So I really started over and call it 2007. And, uh, I went to work for a great company, had a great time there. And I, I was lucky enough to get an opportunity to come to work with Jason here last July. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, the fear of the, my biggest fear is that failure, right? Cause you don't want to be that guy, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your business, whether it's what anything in your personal life, right? I want to win. I want to be a winner. And I mean, it took me a long time to get over that. I mean, I, and my self-esteem was really low and I mean, it's just, it was shitty. I'm not gonna lie, but I mean, it made me a better person now. I'm telling you that right now. So you have to overcome it. If I don't overcome it, I've been, I would have been dead. No, and having... Having gone through a, a divorce myself, I mean, we we've talked about this before. You know, Steve and I have talked about this in in private before. But that's probably the biggest thing when you go through that first one is your the first one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to say there's going to be, but <laughs> it's that you do feel like a failure, and in and that that fear of failure, that fear of I am that guy, can really just like blow us up and and really overwhelm us. You know, from in so many different ways, but at the end of the day, you kind of realize eventually like, man, but that little bit of failure made us way better today than what we are or what we were then. And it was just, it's just worth it. It's a good learning experience. I mean, I hate when people say that I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of failure from any aspect, marriage, business, relationships, anything like that, because failure is a, is a great teacher. It's a great experience. Mm -hmm. It's a great lesson that, you know, I wouldn't be the same guy today if I wouldn't hadn't failed a few times. Totally. Would and, you? No, God, no, absolutely. I wouldn't, I would not be sitting here today in the position I'm in with Jason if I hadn't, if I hadn't gone through that. And I mean, and don't get me wrong, marriages aside, whatever. I mean, I'm sure you've been there, Michael. I've made stupid mistakes. I've made stupid, stupid decisions. Right. Yeah. And I had to pay the consequences for those. Right. Mm. But I learned and I'm glad, I'm actually glad that that happened. I'm, I'm very, very happy that happened. You know, and Ed, I too, because Ed, the, the latter would, <clears> I don't know if, wouldn't have, <laughs> wouldn't have been a good, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Save that conversation for a different day. <laughs> but uh, Ed Milet says it uh, great. He says um, things don't happen to you; they happen for you. One hundred percent, and they do, and they do, and and all the successful people that I know have been through a lot of failure. You know, and and they say it's just part of the process. You got to fail. You got to try, fail, and and s learn. Right, learn, adjust, move forward. You know, anything that's anybody that's done anything great, that's the path. So um, the problem is people don't want to take those risks, and they have the force average. Right, Ryan Ryan always talks about the force average. Yep. It's huge. This force average is like what? I'm like so disappointed at a lot of people in this pandemic. I've just been so disappointed. Like I figured their their reaction would be different, but they just they put on a mask, they go get the shot, and I'm like, okay, you know. Um but we talk about force of average a lot that if you are sitting there listening to us 
you're thinking, I want to go be something or do something greater than what I'm doing today. The biggest thing to do is not to let the force of average hold you down. You can't be afraid of feel, you know, of failure. You got to go through it. Like you're likely to fail. Like everybody's going to oh, fail at some point absolutely. in some aspect. So you just learn and keep going on. But you know, if, if you're so afraid and so paralyzed by fear that you can't make a decision, well, then stop complaining about where you are today because it's going to be the same for the rest of your life. So enjoy where you're at in the rest of life because it's gonna, how it's going to be and how it's going to look. Yep. And you know what? You complain to people, but they don't care. <laughs> Dude, you, you, you know, they really I, I don't care. That. They have their own. They have their own problems, and just like whatever, you know. So it Andy doesn't help. Talked about that. Big time. They don't care, dude. They but that also care. that also keeps you at a lower level, right? We're talking about the energy and vibrations, right? It's true. It's true. It's true. Like I was like, you know, in my whatever, my air mattress in my strip mall, and I was just like, oh my god! And you know, as soon as I said, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to elevate my level. Things just got way better, and a lot of good things started happening to me. I mean, this year, Jesus, I'm in freaking Apex Executives. Like, I just said, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to You're freaking going meet Andy and Ed, right? Dude, like, what the hell? Like, in a year, in right? One year. Right. Yeah, one year. But that's the way you got to think. And and every morning, I, I do have, I have a routine. I meditate. And I I, I just said, instead of this level down here, I'm, I'm at this level here. I'm just going to be at this level. This is where I am. And well, so it's been working. I, it, it totally Absolutely. works. So that's my favorite. My favorite line ever is that your perception dictates your reality. Yeah. Right. So it, wherever you perceive yourself in life, wherever you want to go, your vision, your mental state will put you there. So make a choice, change your attitude, change your perception. Because if I perceive myself in 10 years to be at this level, I'll be there. But the first step is making the choice and making the mental shift that I'm actually going to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, Henry Ford said it great. He said, totally just um, blew Andre's mind right here. He's sitting here and he just <laughs> wrote it down. Michael totally sorry. just blew his mind. <laughs> so sorry, Michael. Uh, Andre, Andre said, <laughs> a gentleman. Andre, Andre's a new guy that works for yeah, us. He's, yeah, he's a great, he's a young kid that works for us. He's a guy oh, yeah. who's going to go out in the insurance business. But yeah, yeah, he's been he's been writing notes down as you speak as well. So it's been. Oh, good. is he? All right, cool. You got to get him. Is he coming he, to Apex? In the background. Get him at the he Apex. Yeah, he is. He is an Apex Entourage. As a matter of fact, yep. And, and RTA, you can go, join RTA too. They're opening it up. He did, he did jump in and join Apex. I actually joined it. Joined it. Uh, Thomas was here. Oh, whatever, three weeks, a month, month ago, ago, maybe, and gave me enough hell about it that I went ahead and joined it. And then I talked Andre into joining as well. So it's good for both of us. Awesome. Yeah, you can never stop learning. Um, but about Henry Ford, the, his um, his saying was like, "If you think you can." Or you think you can't? You're right. You're right. I love it. You know. Yep. Yep. Love it, dude. He was brilliant. Yeah, for sure. You know him, Edison. There's a lot of this stuff. You know, the think and grow rich. Mm-hmm. Just amazing people, but people that have the positive attitude. They say they they will do it. You know, they're going to will it to happen. Ed, Ed says that he said in one of the meetings. I think he was in one of the insurance things that. A guy just stood up like a leader and he says, well, it looks dark, but we're going to will this to happen. We're going to make it happen. And and they did, you know. Just, and what a way to live, right? What a way to live. Hell yeah. So, Got to do it. I think it's, awesome, man. it's the only way to love, live. Love your insight, man. Yeah. I and mean, we talk, a lot, I mean, I know Ed talks a lot about vision and, you know, creating that vision for what you see in the future. I mean, that stuff is so powerful. I can tell you from experience, like sitting and and writing my goals down, even the simplest act of writing your goals down, envisioning what you want your company or want your life to look like. I have some of that stuff from five, six, seven, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Immensely powerful, more powerful than anybody can actually gauge or, or see that it's just do a little bit of that, that little bit of vision stuff, just change your perception, change your mindset. Or eliminate some of that fear so that you'll actually take a step towards that vision or towards that goal, man, you're ahead of 99% of the population. Vision. Also, I read, I just read a book about self-talk, uh, Shad Helmstetter. Awesome book. <clears throat> and I, I subscribe to his like self-talk and just listening to powerful words about yourself. You are great. 
you know, it's like corny stuff. You think it's corny, but it's freaking awesome. Like, yeah, like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> You're going to do whatever you want today. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, let's go. You know, self-talk and vision, you'll be like, it's like rocket ship, boom. Yep. And isn't it crazy how much, Michael and, and Jason, how much you can grow just by doing those little things, just subscribing to that to that gentleman's show, reading a book and taking those nuggets out. It's It's amazing to me that, not more people do that. Right. And I think once you start to do it, you just can't stop in, in my opinion. And, uh, no, it's just crazy. It's, and like, dude, you look at you, man, you were in shit city a year ago. Right. Look at you now. It's yeah. awesome to see that. dude. You know, I'm, I, mean, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm a long way of where I want to be, but I am better than what I was a year ago, but it's just the positive attitude and, and just staying away from the negativity, you know? not dwelling in the negativity oh. when things get negative. Like I, I don't watch TV anymore. I just don't, I watch, no. I, I treat myself like once a week just for entertainment. Just like maybe I'll watch Fox or something like that. <laughs> I'm biased. My man, <laughs> my man. I, I can't watch, I can't watch the Chinese news network. All right. It's not good. Can't do that. <laughs> oh, 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 Bazinga. The, the where's, iron, the, where's that applause button? Son of right. Okay, I can't read some Otherwise, I'd it is, it, the, is the, it is, it is, it is. People are saying, no, no, no. I'm like, yes, it is, it is. The whole thing, yeah. I I just, I, I would like, I'd love to dig deeper, but I can't, I can't do it. But anyway, uh, but I just entertain myself once a week. But I but I stay away from TV, it's just negative stuff, and it just doesn't help me. And it's also a big time-wasting thing. You know, I used to watch TV all the time, yeah. movies and stuff like that. Once in a while, I watch a movie on a plane, but... I mean, I'd rather read a book or go on my, uh, try to div- promote my Facebook group or promote my LinkedIn group or whatever, listen to a podcast or, you know, take a walk or do something like that. Something that would help me like actually benefit me because time as I go along and as you move along, time is the most precious commodity that you have yep. and you can't get that no. back. No, dude. And between everything that you have going and just a, a more props to you, um, you completed 75 hard. We've talked about 75 hard a little bit on the podcast. So you don't have time to do that shit. You're a busy guy. I mean, 75 hard request. It requires a lot of, a lot of time and a lot of work. So super props to you. Congratulations for finishing your first one, dude. That's awesome. Pre- well, it was the second time work. around. <clears throat> so I did, right. Oh yeah, right I did it twice. Right so, but, but that, if you're not on it, get on it because it will yep. change your mindset. It will make things so much clear. Like I didn't drink beer for 75 days. It's like, Oh my God. But it that might be the one thing that's holding us back from doing it right now. Or challenging everybody to do it. Is, well, yeah. it you need a yeah. cleanse once in a while. You got to cleanse that stuff out. So, and it gives, just gives you a lot of clarity. And it also um, just makes things a lot, you know, it sorts everything out and it, it kind of it puts you in a, a trajectory to, to move. So I, I do it in the beginning of the year. I, I got to do the other phases as well, but sure. Uh, I always start the year off with that. I, I did it last year. It was great. I mean, I had a great year. I mean, even this the pandemic. I mean, I got I got the insurance thing going. I, I wrote a book, right? Right on, man. And um, you know, just doing stuff like that. You know, getting the getting the podcast moving and uh, just all positive stuff. So it's just this year doing it again just re reinforces everything and gets you to that next level. And now I'm joining things like I'd never thought I would join and do things that I would never and speak to people that I never thought I would speak to, but it's, it's, awesome, it's just a positive thing. Yeah. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. Great. Well, so Michael, how does, you know, obviously our listeners, you know, you're, how do they follow you? Well, you got, I got Michael at uh, crushing your fear.com. You can, uh, you know, always, um, you know, email me there. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Michael Barra at Michael Barra. Um, you could check can check me out there. B E A R A. Michael and then B E A R A, right? This is pretty. Oh, that was easy. Okay. But um, <clears throat> yeah, you can follow me there. I have crushingyourfear.com. Uh, I also have the Crushing Your Fear podcast. You know, we're on iTunes, we're on iHeartRadio, we're on Stitcher, you know, we're pretty much wherever you listen to podcasts and, you know, check us out. If you have any suggestions for people to come on the show, I'd love to have them. Um, awesome. You know, give us give us uh, give us some love on ratings. I, I would appreciate that. Subscribe, and uh, yeah. I mean, how how can we find you guys too? I mean, because I'm going to put this on my uh, podcast. 
And that, that's awesome. You want me to start, dude? Go for it. So yeah, you can you can find me at the real S M F T. That's on Instagram. And I'm just going to break it down because we do curse on the show. Steve Michael Franklin Taylor. Steven Michael Franklin <laughs> Taylor. The real S M F T. Um, at Noble Business and Brews on Instagram, noblebusinessandbrews.com. And I'll just throw it out for him at Jason Graybill. That's it. So, yeah, we love, dude, thank you so much for being on the show, man. Your insight, where you've come from, where you've been, and where you're going is amazing, dude. Are you going to the, uh, the, the, the mastermind in Texas? Yes, yes. I'm not going to make the flying Friday there? for April because I'm taking the kids away next week. So, but I'm going to, um, I will I'll definitely be at the million dollar mastermind. If, if any of your listeners are not signed up yet, sign up because it'd be fantastic guests. I saw the guest list. I'm like, what? These people are going to be oh, there. It's, it's going to be killer. Loaded. So, Crazy. Yeah. I can't wait. We need to connect with you, dude. We need to hook up and have a beer. We're going to connect and we'll have yeah. many beers and, um, you know, we, we should talk. Yeah, absolutely. Help each other out. I think we can do well, Let's talk business things. too, right? Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much for being on the show. Man. Love it, Michael. Thanks for having us. Thank um, you. Thanks for being on the show. Appreciate it. Won't see you in a couple of weeks, but we'll see you in a month. Excellent. Thank you very much. Right on. Okay. Bye. Have a great night, bud. Thank you. Love you guys. Thanks for listening. Okay. Yeah. That was Jason Grabeel and Steve Taylor. They're the No Bull Business and Bruce podcast. Uh, also an Apex Executives um, and RTA as well. Fantastic groups, fantastic guys. I'm glad they're insurance. I want to do some stuff with them. It's going to be cool. But that's what you got to do. You got to talk to people, get on, uh, just talk. Start your own podcast. Why not? I don't know what the hell I'm doing, right? I'm starting a podcast here. I did the Craft Beer Storm podcast, which is still in existence. I haven't put an episode out for a while. I got to resurrect that. People are still down- downloading it. Uh, craft beer storm. Um, they used to have a brewery, and uh, but now we have crushing your fear, uh, which I wrote a book. I wrote a book, and uh, we're going to get it out. I have the manuscript. They're just trying to figure out when the timing and everything. And um, but we had Jason and Steve on. They're they're fantastic guys. They've been through a lot too. They've had two divorces as well. And <laughs> what are you going to do? You try the best you can, and um, you know. Life is not a, a straight line. It's up and down. I guess Naveen Jain said it. He said, uh, you know, life is up and down. If it's a straight line, you're dead. Right? You got life in you, so you, you make the best of it. And, uh, you know, and I want to repeat it from Ed Milet. Things happen. Uh, they don't happen to you. They happen for you. Right? So when things look really dark, just uh, remember it's the universe kind of trying to tell you something and, and change your path of where you want to go and where you need to go. And just embrace it and make the best of it and crush that fear. It's important. All right. I'm, I'm glad you tuned in today. I'm glad you have this podcast. Please share this with somebody. Um, if I can help one person with this podcast, it's everything, man. It's everything. And uh, like us on iTunes. Give us a rating, review, subscribe. And you will make my day. All right, guys. Uh, Love you guys, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.